Obviously, I thought a good place to start is with Bonfire of Teenagers, the mm. album. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we haven't seen the release of it yet. Can you tell us what the status of that is? It's very good. It's about to be announced and released very, very quickly. Oh, brilliant. So I will leave it up to others to announce that. Mm -hmm. And it will be soon. But it is soon. on its way. Yes, it's on its way. Excellent. It's finally. It's been a long claw crawl but it's on its way and okay. i'm very pleased and it's beautiful it's okay. absolutely beautiful you sound really happy with it i'm so sound? happy with it I'm yeah. so happy with it it's incredible because i've been around a long time and if you can still make music that really excites you mm -hmm. i think that's unusual yeah. i think a lot of people who've been around for 40 years can't quite do that mm. and i'm not being snippety i don't think they can i don't think so. but here Suddenly in my life, I have this album, which is really, I know people always say it's the best, but it actually is. It actually is. And I'm grateful. grateful. That must be a great feeling after all those years to still know that you're it is. It is. in that place. You know? It is. And I have made lots of music over those years. It's been pretty constant. Mm -hmm. So having another stretch is unbelievable because... I'm not 22. Um, I wanted to sort of say, like, I've been checking the set lists of the, mm -hmm. the, the dates you've been doing recently, and you've done a lot of songs from Bonfire of Teenagers. Yes. Um, do you feel an extra, like, sense of pressure when you're performing songs to a crowd that perhaps are unfamiliar with the work? Or does it not really cross no, your mind? No, because I think you should be able to interest anybody mm -hmm. with any song, really. Mm -hmm. You can't simply say, well, I'm only good for that song. I'm only interesting with that song. I can only sing that song. You have to be able to sing absolutely anything and do it in a way that interests people. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is the measure of somebody who really deserves to be on the stage. Yeah. Um, that's actually one of the things that I admire about you as a performer is you don't patronise your audience by doing the same things over and over. You, you, you don't shy away from doing perhaps rare tracks or, or mm. obscure songs. I mean, is that a deliberate choice to mix things up? Or do you literally go well, with your gut instinct with what you pick? I think they like it also. I think they like to hear uh, um, off-the-beaten-track songs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the thing is, as long as you can do it and it's, it's right and it's convincing and it's enjoyable, yeah. then it doesn't matter what you sing. Exactly. It doesn't matter what you sing. And it the really shows isn't. have had such a fantastic reception as well. Incredible. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely incredible. I am really dazed by it and obviously thrilled. Mm -hmm. Obviously thrilled. I think you have probably one of the most diehard army of fans that I've ever witnessed. Like, yeah. they travel all the world. They They're incredible. They cross continents. They, they camp outside venues. They I mean, do. How they does do. that feel to you? Like, after that years, you command that still that level of respect and love from people. I think it... It's because I'm, I'm a real person and they know I'm true. Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite rare, really, to have that kind of audience. You can be a stadium band and you can play in enormous uh, to millions of people every night, but nobody wants to go near your stage. You mm -hmm. are a brand and you are a business, yeah. but yeah. I'm not like that. I, I wasn't made by the music industry. I was made by the people. And there's a huge difference. When you look at artists, you can tell all of those who are put there by the music industry. You will be very big now. You'll be very famous. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are of the people. There are singers who are of the people, of mm -hmm. which I am one. And often that works against you because the industry don't particularly like people like me. And the music press don't particularly like people like me because they know I'm of the people. They know it isn't just a money has been injected into this yeah. person. N nothing has been injected into me, I can assure you. <laughs> so they don't know what to do with people like me. They think, this is odd. It's almost like there's a preference to manufacture artists so that they can control... They them. understand yeah. manufactured artists. Mm -hmm. They can get rid of them when it's they're bored, you know, when industry is bored with them, they just get rid of them. Yeah. But you can't with people like me mm. unless I'm shot. Because it feels like you've made that personal connection yes. with your audience and that's, yeah. that makes a big difference. Well, I didn't make it because of radio. No. Radio, British radio was never on my side. <laughs> and uh, so it's gratifying. You just do it for the love of Yes, of music. It's, it's very, very genuine. Mm -hmm. It's very genuine. 
Um, from Bonfire of Teenagers, just going back to the album, do you have any favourite tracks on there? I mean, it isn't heard... possible, really. It's the, they're all the same to me in the sense that the, I, I love them so much. Mm -hmm. So, whichever ones the the record label choose to be released as singles and so forth, it doesn't matter because it's all great. It's all mm -hmm. wonderful to me. Okay, so you sound very happy. I know it's, it's, it's worrying. <laughs> That's worrying. Um, you've been part of the music world for so long now, Morrissey. I'm just wondering, what would you say, in your opinion, in your experience, is your biggest frustration that you've had and, and that you see? Well, the blessing is the frustration because you're outside the gates and uh, you, don't, you, you don't really have anything to do with I don't really have anything to do with the music industry. And I don't think I ever have. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, but sometimes you think, well, I think I do deserve to be on the radio. I think I do deserve to be included Absolutely. somewhere. But Absolutely. it doesn't ever happen. I, I, they don't include me anywhere, even just for perseverance and just to shut me up. They don't include <laughs> me. It's very strange, very peculiar. It's and shocking it's, as well, because they must see the audience is still there for you. They don't care. Yeah. They don't care. They don't care about it. If you don't chase them and say, please do this for me, please, 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 please then they just think, well, no. They want to be chased. They want to be wooed. But you're not, not having none of that, I which is good. I can't do it. No, I, no. Can't. I can't. Um, how have you personally coped? I mean, I know that you've probably asked, been asked about this quite a lot, but how do you personally cope with seeing yourself fictionalised and caricatured by the press so much? I mean... Mm -hmm. It's, is, is it difficult, or do you, well, are you so it, used to it? You're... I'm used to it, but it, it, it isn't positive. It's always uh, ridiculous, I think, mostly, as far as I can tell. But I think you, you put yourself out there, and you step out there, and you have to expect it, really. Mm -hmm. It's going, going to happen, and it happens to everybody, to a degree, if they're interesting. Yeah. It doesn't happen to people who are not very interested. Exactly, but the so, people that... The scene is not interesting, are often the ones that are just frightened to actually say what's on their mind and what they believe. Usually, there mm. is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you currently working on anything else? I know that I don't want to jump forward too much because yeah. of the new album, but I have read somewhere that you've been writing and recording again. Is there any yes. truth to yes. that? Yes, we have written the, the, the follow up album and that will be wow. recorded soon, but it won't be released soon because. On fire of teenagers must have a chance to breathe and blow and so yeah, forth. And yeah. So, but it will okay. be recorded soon, yes. Um, that is one thing that's actually really impressive. I mean, looking at the length of your career, other artists that might be in that position would often slow down, whereas actually, if anything, you've become more yes. regular, like you, you're very prolific. <laughs> well, that's a nice word. Someone would have other words, but uh, uh, it's, it's all I think about. I haven't changed, it's all I think about. Mm -hmm. All day, all night, all I think about is the voice, the song. And, uh, it's all I think about. I am trapped, dedicated, call it what you will, but uh, it's my life. You'd say it's your meaning then? It's, in everything. it's my purpose, really. I don't, you won't see me on a golf course or on a horse somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do anything, really. <laughs> Just <laughs> all music. People only ever see me running into, I don't know, the bread shop. But otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I don't really exist. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, looking at um, everything that I've personally seen in the recent years in the music industry, one thing I would say is actually how bland it's become. There's so few people that are willing to stand up and stand out for anything that they're almost standing for nothing and they're not really expressing anything. But you're the opposite of that. I mean, was this just part of who you are or did you have a, a, like a mental decision like I, I want, to, I want no. to get people challenged and thinking? And I, I don't really have a choice, but, it, but the thing is you have to make it interesting for people. Mm. You have to make music interesting for people and you have to make your position interesting. In the late 90s, I, I was interviewed a great deal and I... I, I constantly spoke of a, a dumbing down that was happening in England, yeah. everywhere. Television, television commercials, everything to do with British life. It was just aimed at the moron. And that has absolutely happened now. 
I mean, if you watch British television commercials, they're insufferable. Mm -hmm. The noise and the content is always the same. People dancing in six million pound kitchens. That's all people do in Britain is dance, 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 dance. Yeah. They deliver a pizza, they're dancing, dancing, dancing. It's really now moronic. And empty. And that mm -hmm. shows everywhere. And music, really, not many people have faith in music anymore. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of things have changed financially in the music industry, labels now can just get rid of you if your album doesn't go instantly platinum. There's so many younger bands who have done really well with their first album. Maybe they reach 23, 22, 21. It's not enough. They're dumped. They're not allowed to make a second album. Whereas years ago, as you might know, people could make five flops and the mm -hmm. label would stick by them. Now the labels are quite bloodless. They will just get rid of you if you say anything that they don't agree with. They're they, not interested. They won't see you through the journey anymore. No, 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 no. They're not interested. They're not. No. And that's, you know, the, now they talk all about, oh, we must have diversity, 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 which is pe diversity of people that you don't know. And mm -hmm. it just means, it's just another word for conformity. It's yeah. the new way of saying conformity, diversity. You don't see anything diverse anywhere. No. It's all conformity. It's having the opposite effect, in fact, isn't it? It is, because when people talk about diversity, they don't think about the great things that we don't have in common. Mm -hmm. And those things are ignored. And they always made countries very interesting because you could travel to Germany, you could see the most incredible culture. You go to Italy, you see the most incredible culture. Now they just want everything to be the same, the same, the same. Yeah. So diversity means conformity. It doesn't mean let's, it doesn't mean avant-garde or mm -hmm. let's make really interesting, strange art. It means box everybody. Yeah. Diversity, I think, is He's a dying, dreadful word. Mm. Pin it to anything and that situation is finished. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible word. Terrible. Do you have an opinion on social media? Because whenever I dip, dip in and have a look, I think actually the, the group think and the extreme opinions that are pushed there are actually part of this problem. Do you I think so, because now everybody is an expert critic. Everybody is an expert scientist. They know everything. Mm -hmm. They have the chance to review everything and destroy people. Yeah. And if they can get their friends to join in and make a campaign of let's get rid of such a body. You know, I think it more or less happened to Jermaine Greer, J.K. Rowling, a two perfect example. Yeah. If we all get together and try and get rid of these people and don't stop harping on about how dangerous they are, mm. then it's, it's pretty lethal. And I think there will be a way to control it eventually, but nobody knows how yet. And I don't think the um, political elite like it very much because no. if you notice, politicians are going rapidly as well. And that's because of social media and people saying, mm. I don't like you, exactly. which they couldn't do in the past. Yeah. They could, but now they can. So there's two okay. sides to that coin, yeah. really, isn't there? Yeah. But I quite, I quite often look at some of the things on there and think the witch hunts aren't really over, are they, entirely? Well, in one degree. The, you know, no, one, the thing is, they desperately need to find a witch. Mm. They have to find a witch. They have somebody to find to somebody mm. who is disgraceful and horrible and blah, 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 blah. And uh, you can see the joy in mm. people. Uh, do you remember Mary Whitehouse? Yes. Yeah. The joy. So many people have turned into Mary Whitehouse trying to cancel. I don't like, yeah. I'm offended. Uh, as if you being offended means, means that, anything. The, mm. the, the, that you're intelligent. It just means you're an idiot. <laughs> Um, but this Mary White, we're in a Mary Whitehouse culture now mm -hmm. where everybody must say, stop, I don't like that. Get us off the planet. And people like that, I think, are, are, are dreadful people. Yeah. Just walk the other way. Mm -hmm. Don't look. Absolutely. Switch off. Listen to something else. Bake a cake. You don't have to stop it for other people. No. Yeah. But also, we're also in a in a protest culture like the late 60s, when everybody loved to go out and be, get on the streets and protest and be angry about something and to march up and down. Everybody wants to do that now. Mm -hmm. They want to be irate about something, which is okay, but uh, you might be wasting your time. Yeah, um, I wanted to touch upon animal rights. It's such a big thing mm. to you. It's been a current theme in your music yeah. and you've spoken out about it in interviews. Um, I personally have noticed a, a positive shift going in restaurants and cafes. It's much more commonplace yeah. to find vegan and vegetarian options. Do you feel like we're now on the right trajectory or are we too far to I think feel it's, hopeful? I think it's 
really fascinating because I'm old enough to remember when it was really stuck situation. You couldn't do anything about anything. And if you said the word vegetarian, mm. you were ridiculed beyond belief. Yeah. But now I'm just so happy about the changes everywhere. I'm really, really happy. Mm. And um, so I know I have spoken endlessly about this in the past, but I, I feel almost justified now. Yeah. Because there's a great reluctance, but they're doing it anyway. They're reluctant to, to give you um, any credence. Yeah. But it's yeah. happening anyway because they want to make money. So if you, if you have eight friends who go out to a restaurant and two of your friends happen to be vegan, then that restaurant is going to lose everybody if yeah. they can't cater for the two mm -hmm. vegans. Absolutely. So everybody's just saying, oh, God, we have to do it now. And everybody is becoming aware of animals as um, beautiful creatures who mm -hmm. have done so much for us yeah they've done so much for us give them a rest instead of taking leave taking, them alone yeah. they've done so much for mm -hmm. the human race and they should be rewarded now and they should be allowed to live i think, I think. that's a massive thing you've done morrissey like i'd say you're one of the leading figures that have actually highlighted the issue well so i incredible. try i try my best <laughs> i try my best thank you so much thank you